How's the sound? Is this good? Yeah? Okay. I think you can uh, CGI out the gray. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, unless you can, because then that'd be awesome. All right, <laughs> I'm good. Okay, I'm ready. Gulp. The very name was enough to strike terror into the hearts of filmgoers all over the world. A generation thrilled and screamed to the legendary monster's roar. And his name soon eclipsed would-be rivals like Godzilla and King Kong. But for Gulp, becoming the literal biggest star in Hollywood was a double-edged sword. Fame had its price, and its price was too high. I first met Gulp, oh, way back, uh, 1980, 81, something like that. Uh, I was just a kid and my family were taking a vacation to Wisconsin. Uh, my parents' friends had a cabin and so we went up there for the weekend and did some camping and uh, roasting marshmallows on the campfire and did some boating. Um, and while we were out on the lake that day, suddenly out of the water came this giant stop motion dinosaur. Um, I'd never seen anything like it in my life. It was incredible. Um, we were terrified at first, of course, because this thing was coming towards us. But we quickly realized that he didn't mean us any harm. He was very friendly. Turns out he'd been hibernating at the bottom of this lake for millions of years. Uh, but he was still just a kid, uh, like me. So we hit it off instantly. Um, we hung out the rest of the night, um, gave him some of the marshmallows, and uh, man, he was so hungry. You have never seen anyone as hungry as this dinosaur in your life. He just kept gulping everything down and uh, wouldn't stop. And that's how he came about his name, Gulp. Gulp followed his new friend back home to Iowa and lived in the woods behind his house. David would bring him snacks and hang out with him. And soon the two were inseparable. But it was a late summer trip to the Oasis Drive-In that proved to be the turning point in their friendship and their careers. So I was always a big fan of monster movies. Uh, Godzilla, Rodan, King Kong, all of those movies were just magical to me. I love them. In fact, the first job I ever remember wanting to do was playing the guy in the Godzilla costume. Like, smashing miniature cities and knocking planes out of the air. It's like, ah, oh, I would love that. In fact, if somebody offered me that job today, I would still do it. I think that would be incredible. Now, what I didn't realize is that Gulp would also become a fan of giant monster movies. Later that summer, we were going to a movie at the Oasis Drive-In. They were showing a double feature of Planet of the Dinosaurs and the Crater Lake Monster. I thought if we sat in the back behind all the cars, Gulp wouldn't block anything and would be able to see, and um, that would be just perfect. I had no idea, though, that Gulp had never seen another stop-motion dinosaur besides himself. So when the first dinosaur came on screen, he was transfixed. He couldn't stop looking at the movie. He just sat there with this giant grin on his face and a look of amazement in his eyes. I had gone to the snack bar uh, to get us something to eat, and I got the largest popcorn I could find to bring for Gulp. He didn't even touch it. He was so into the movie that he wasn't even hungry. Like, I'd never seen Gulp not hungry before, but he didn't eat a bite. And 
We got home later that night after the movies. He was so excited, he couldn't stop talking about it all night. He was just chatter, chatter, chatter. And I knew that he had fallen in love with monster movies the same way that I was. Gulp decided that very evening that someday he would become the biggest movie star in the world. He had no idea how right he was. At that age, I'd already been experimenting with filmmaking. Uh, my dad had an old Super 8 movie camera, and I would take that in the backyard with my friends and make these man-in-suit monster films. So I'd put on a rubber mask and a costume and chase them around and attack them, and they'd fight me back. And it was super fun, um, but it was a little limited in scope of what we could do. After that night at the drive-in, I realized that having a real stop-motion dinosaur as my filmmaking partner would just open up a whole new world of filmmaking for us. So Gulp and I started working on our very first script. Okay, Gulp, action! Gulp's first film was a monster hit with all of the neighborhood kids. Its popularity led to a whole series of Super 8 films, each more ambitious than the last. As they grew older, Gulp and David got involved in theater and took their talents to the stage. They appeared in multiple plays together in high school and college, including Little Shop of Horrors and The Foreigner. Following college, Gulp and David packed up their belongings, said goodbye to their friends, and headed out to Hollywood, where big screen success was waiting for them. Kendra is a junior at Des Moines East High School. She has been a member of the Color Guard for two years and would like to thank her parents, Jim and Sharon Nelson, and her very supportive Color Guard family. Let's welcome our 1992 Iowa Outstanding Auxiliary, Kendra Nelson. I am Kendra Nelson, and I'm an actress, and um, I've been in a number of gulp films. In high school, I was in Color Guard. I was a flag twirler and um, through competition became Miss Flag Iowa. People often assume that I met Bush and Gulp for the first time on a film set. But in fact, we met at the University of Iowa. Well, I can't really say we met because I'm sure they wouldn't remember it at all. Um, they were upperclassmen and everybody knew what was going on with them. You know, they were always like doing their duo like in all of the shows. So. They were kind of a thing. They were kind of a big deal. And I was an underclassman. Um, but we, uh, like a group of friends and I, had gone to see them in Hamlet. And it was in the summer. We packed our picnic basket and a blanket. And we sat outdoors to see their show. And I remember being like really intrigued. Like, what is Gulp going to bring to Hamlet? Like, it really was sort of like atypical casting. Um, but then he was incredible. I mean, I had seen like videos of Patrick Stewart 
in Hamlet, and Gulp was far and away better. No, don't eat this Gulp! So after college, um, I wanted to, to go to the big city. I wanted to spread my wings and, and see if I could break into the entertainment industry. So I packed up all of my belongings in my car and I moved to LA. And um, I found a place in North Hollywood, uh, you know, really cheap rent. And I started doing whatever I could to make money. So I was a cater waiter. I did kids' birthday parties. I uh, did touring children's theater. I worked at Disneyland. Like I did all of the things that a struggling artist does just to make ends meet while you're also going out and, and trying out for shows and looking in Backstage West and whatever you can to, to try to get some real acting work. While Kadri was getting her feet wet in Hollywood, Gulp and David were busy establishing their names on the indie film scene. Gulp! Bush and Gulp had garnered some attention in Hollywood with two self-financed films that got rave reviews at local midnight screenings. Gulp vs. Titmouse and Gulp Untamed cast the dinosaur as a rampaging monster. God. With Bush the only one who could fight him. Gulp, I will destroy you! Every Thursday, um, Backstage West would come out and I would look through whatever the breakdowns were. And I saw this uh, unnamed claymation dinosaur film. And so I was intrigued and they were looking for someone who could be um, an actor combatant who could do like some fight choreography. And in college, I'd done some stage combat, but then I also had back history as Miss Lag Iowa. I'm Lori Lutko and I'm Kathy Nelson. And our routine is called No Ho Ho. And then for the finale, oh. everyone knows we're the best squad. We're gonna show you up so bad. So I sent in my headshot. Uh, you know, I'd sent in a bunch that day, so I wasn't necessarily expecting that I was gonna get this. But since I already knew Gulp and David Bush from University of Iowa, I was kind of hoping they might notice like University of Iowa and Miss Flag Iowa. Like I was kind of hoping that they would see these things, they would stand out to them. Bush and Gulp did take notice of Nelson's headshot and resume and wasted no time calling her in to audition for their new independent film. When we saw Kadri audition, right away, we knew she was the one. She was perfect for it. She had a sense of humor, but she was also warm, friendly, drop dead gorgeous. And she knew her way around a flag. She could spin that thing and flip it up in the air and fight with it. And that was exactly the kind of talent we thought would propel our next film into the stratosphere. Excellent. Go! Nice. One more time. <laughs> hey, go! Oh my gosh. The first day on set, I was a bundle of nerves. Rolling. My call was at 6 a.m. I couldn't even sleep that night anyway. Like, my mind as well as that the call was four. Like, I didn't do any sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm okay. It was just really exciting. It was so fun being there and... Uh, yeah, Gulp came over and introduced himself again, and he was like, this is great to see you. It's going to be really fun getting to know you better. And, uh, yeah, David Bush seemed really happy, too, that I was there. So, yeah, it was, it was a really fun day. Gulp 
3 was far more ambitious than any of the earlier films, with a higher budget, a larger cast, and complex fight choreography. We had an opportunity to do one of those uh, big fight scenes that we'd been wanting to do. Gulp and Kadri, they practiced so hard, they stayed late and choreographed this giant fight scene. Matt! So the day that the film was going to premiere, we show up on Hollywood Boulevard and they've set up stands for the fans. They're going crazy. Some people are wearing like gulp masks and some people are holding up signs and everybody's cheering and I step out of the car and people went wild. Like even though I hadn't even, they haven't even seen the film yet, like I haven't even been. But they were just so excited for what they were going to see. I mean, some people had been waiting in line outside of the Chinese theater for like days. The movie started and it was dramatic, it was frightening, it was filled with action, it was funny. It just went over like a dream. So when I finally stepped out, they're like, they just went wild and there were people, the like paparazzi there taking pictures. And then Gulb came out and like we all did some group shots together with David, me and Gulb. There was so much energy, the whole street was buzzing. Gulp 3 was a smash hit with audiences and critics alike. Its enormous success led to a wave of gulp a mania and Gulp soon found himself on merchandise ranging from toys to cereal boxes to video games. Naturally, sequels followed, each one bigger and more popular than the last. Meanwhile, alongside the trio's pop culture achievements, something more personal was developing. Um, well, you know, when you're on set, you're together from morning till night. So you get there, it's 5, 6 a.m., you don't leave until well after dinner. So you get really close. It's sort of like a camp experience where for that time that you're shooting, you're each other's whole world. And so also sort of like camp, like there are romances. People are sort of pairing off. And uh, David and I really got to know each other during that film. And at first, we was just like really buddy-buddy and just making jokes with each other. And then I started really looking forward to like, oh, am I gonna see him here? Am I gonna see him there? And like, as the scenes would come up, I'd be really excited on those days that I knew we were gonna be doing a scene together because we would have that much more one-on-one -on -one time. And we would take like lunch breaks together or we would like kind of make little plans like see craft services. Our relationship got stronger and stronger and we started doing everything together we used to take trips together the three of us we went to disneyland and all over the u.s and san francisco and europe and it was always the trio and we were always uh you know joined at the hip all of us and when Kateri and i started getting more serious i don't know i think gulp struggled with that a little bit um and 
he didn't take well to Kadri and I, you know, wanting to be a couple sometimes, not a trio. Despite his misgivings, Gulp was delighted when his two best friends decided to tie the knot. As a couple, want to thank David for getting married because the only time we dance is at weddings. <laughs> Known Dave since seventh grade, uh, and I have married him myself twice on stage, so I know how great it is to be married to Dave. Uh, so I congratulate you, Kadri, on the catch that you've got. I just want you to know, Kadri, if you didn't take him, I was going to take him. And David, if I was straight, I would take her. Just I just want to wish you guys a, a perfect marriage and uh, many, many happy years here. And I look forward to seeing you both in the future here. Uh, congratulations again, thank you. After a whirlwind honeymoon for Kadri and David, the trio got back together to figure out what their next project should be. The offers were flooding in. Um, Film, theater, television, uh, kind of everything. And Gulp and I both wanted to do something a little bit different from what we had been doing. We'd been doing these big uh, monster movie action spectacles. So for our next project, we chose Gulp and the Stash, which was a retro throwback buddy cop show. Uh, it aired on NBC for seven seasons and uh, was a pretty huge hit. It was a thrill. and. Something that we we enjoyed tremendously. About time you showed up, Detective. Stash. What? I go by Stash now. <laughs> I'm not calling you Stash. What do you want? You're being reassigned. Gigantic undercover law enforcement personnel. Oh hell no! I ain't working with no gulp unit! Tell that to your new partner. Oh, nuts! Just because we're partners doesn't mean we're gonna be friends, you got that? The trio's most ambitious film was next. They were riding high on a massive wave of popularity and had begun to believe they could do no wrong. So, 
A lot of people don't realize that Gulp is an even bigger star in France than he is in the United States. They love him there. I don't know if it was the French people's love of food that gave them a, um, like a kindred spirit with Gulp, perhaps, but our movies made a ton of money overseas in France. There was this production company in France that said, hey, why don't you come do a job with us and it can be like this co-production and really meet your fans where they are. Well, of course we said yes, we jumped at that. I mean, who wouldn't? Uh, they put a lot of money into the budget and we knew we could make this the most epic gulp project yet. La vie dans rêve merveilleux. Paris tellement magique. Bonsoir. <laughs> Les fleurs sont en printemps. Et je m'en fous du monde. Champ Elysee was all set to be Gulp's greatest success, a wildly creative picture which took huge risks with the successful Gulp formula. We decided, and this was what ended up being our Achilles heel, that we should try to appeal to the French sensibility. But none of us had spent any time in France before, so most of what we knew about from the French sensibility was just like whatever we'd kind of gleaned from the world. So they didn't like it. They're like, why are you doing this? They wanted a real gulp picture that happened to have the backdrop of like Eiffel Tower the backdrop of the Champs-Élysées. Not this like weird senior year of college art film. What can I say? Champ Elysee was a disaster. It wasn't what our fans wanted. We we tried to get too artsy with it. The premiere at Cannes was so embarrassing. 
We're all dressed up. We're dressed to the nines. Sit down. Almost immediately we knew this is not going to go over well. Nobody liked it in the audience. Like, it was a complete pan. I think Gulp, though, he just didn't get it. Like, David and I knew right away, this is a flop with a capital F. But Gulp still thought, no, I can do whatever. Like, he hadn't really known a letdown yet. So it came the time for the award ceremony. They read the winner. Gulp stood up anyway. He was so certain it was going to be him, he wasn't even listening. And the award goes to... David Lynch! Oh. The crowd starts booing. They're throwing baguettes at the screen. Oh. <laughs> So after we got back home, I took a, a good hard think about what our next steps were, and I thought the best plan would be to go back to basics. Gulp on the Rampage film, eating things left and right, Kadri and I trying to stop him. Just the, the basics of what our fans want and what they expect from a Gulp picture. But Gulp had other ideas. The dinosaur wanted to keep going bigger pushing a high-concept science fiction project with a budget that made Chomp Elise look modest in comparison. Gulp and I fought hard about this. He had the script that he developed uh, for a movie called Ground Control to Major Gulp. It was a huge blowout sci-fi action epic. Uh, spaceships, laser battles, action sequences. He kept saying that it would make Star Wars look like something that a little kid made in his backyard. I fought him hard on this, but he was determined. He said he was the star, and it was ground control to major gulp or nothing. Eventually, I, I gave in, perhaps against my better judgment, but ground control to major gulp is what we made, or tried to make. Bush was right to be concerned. Tensions were high on set as production began on ground control to Major Gulp. And things got worse when the production fell behind schedule and went massively over budget. leaving you here alone. Teleport now. Initiating teleport sequence. Now. was perfect. Yeah, that felt good. Yeah, how did you feel about that one, Gulp? Well, what was wrong with it? I thought it looked pretty good. It's fine. We can do another one. You sure? Yeah, it's no big deal. All right, um, everybody, uh, we're going again. Uh, fan on, please. 
I'm rolling. Quiet on set. Sound speed. Take two. And action. Control, I need teleport now. All right, everybody, we're going again. Rolling. Sound speed. Take three. Action. Control, I need teleport now. Rolling. Sound speed. Take four. And action. Control, I need teleport now. Take five. Action. Control, I need teleport now. Now! Sound speed. Control, I need teleport now. Action. Control. I need teleport now. Take 12. Action. Control. I need teleport. Take 36. I need teleport now. Take 42. Action. Control. I need teleport now. Control. I need teleport now. 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 Take 57. Action. Control, I need teleport now. Cut. Gulp, man, we've got to move on. We've done 57 takes of this. Seriously, Gulp? How many different ways can I say teleport now? Gulp, this thing is bleeding money. Do you have any idea how far behind schedule we are? You're not Stanley fucking Kubrick. <laughs> Dude, chill. Gulp's out of control behavior, coupled with a budget that was spiraling out of control, resulted in the project's collapse. Ground control to Major Gulp was shut down and never completed. So we just had to part ways. And I wish that wasn't the case. I really, really do. But you also can't be someone else's punching bag forever. And that's really what it started to feel like. Like, we all are offering something too here, Gulp. Like you're not, yes, it's a Gulp film, but it's a group project. The movie completely fell apart, never got finished. <sighs> Gulp and I had a major blowout and um, we we parted ways. We We, ended our production company. We stopped making films together. I... I'm sorry, I haven't talked about this in a long time, so it's, it's bringing up a lot of emotions that... Look, can we take a break? Can we just stop for a second? Gulpimation Studios closed its doors, and so did Hollywood. For the first time, Gulp found himself both without friends and without a career. Nobody would hire him in the film business, so he took whatever work he could find. but he just couldn't seem to hold down a job. Eventually, Gulp was living on the street by the Hollywood Walk of Fame, begging passers-by for handouts.
Gulp was here today, God, if Gulp was here today, I would say, let's focus on those good times, Gulp. We had so many good years ahead of really what was a finite period where things went wrong. And let's think about who we were as young kids, like so full of hope, so full of promise, and realize that it's all bullshit. Like it doesn't matter. And so let's just kind of let that go and realize that really the heart of who we are, it's the same. It's the same as who we were. It's just like young kids full of dreams in Hollywood. Yeah, I know what you mean. I. I really miss the big guy. I um, The good times that we had and when things were great, they were so great. And I wish that I had tried harder after we all fell apart. I wish I'd tried harder to save that friendship and that relationship. Um, but you know, the past is the past. It is what it is. And you can't change that. But if Gulp were here today, I think I'd just say to him, hey pal, how you doing? I'd give him a big hug, just a huge hug, and let him know that everything in the past is the past, and I want to be friends again. What was that? Why don't you go check? pal. How are you doing? Did you do this? <laughs> hey. hey, it's been too long. I don't know, what do you think? On page 81 here, where you say roar, I was kind of wondering if we wanted to do more of like a, a roar. Oh yeah, 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 that's a great idea. Let's do that. So we're back here at the lake where David and Gulp first met all those years ago. Um, we're shooting a new movie together. <laughs> so it's just incredible. It feels like not a moment has passed. We didn't skip a beat. The whole gang's together again. I don't know, but it sounded like there were more of them. Look out! We glad to see you. Just in the nick of time, too. 
Oh, no. What? Oh, no. besoin de somnifères pour faire taire ces terres Qui me disent ce qu'on aurait pu être, ce qui aurait pu renaître Tant vrai à peine j'y croyais, tu es comme fer Tu coulais dans mes veines Stop dans motion, the story of gold, take one Mais putain, I need teleport now Mais t'as tout fait péter, I know, de désolé de j'ai tout essayé Mais putain, ce que je t'aimais mais t'as tout fait foirer, t'avais déjà tes idées décidées à ne pas changer Mais fini les illusions, les passions à la con Fini les illusions, j'en ai ma claque, c'est bon This is the end. Faussement partagé, je suis triste et seule. C'est triste d'être seule. J'ai tout tourné, retourné jusqu'à ne plus vouloir te retrouver. Mais putain, ce que je t'aimais. Mais t'as tout fait péter à coups de désolé de j'ai tout essayé. Mais putain, ce que je t'aimais. Mais t'as tout fait foirer. T'avais déjà tes idées décidées à ne pas changer. Mais 